took all I didn't have nothing. Four, that's four years of, of progress. Now I gotta start all over again. I mean, the only thing we got is family. And that's, that's the only thing we can, you know, depend on right now is family. Tonight, tonight, some families have been left with nothing but each other after at least 10 tornadoes now leave a trail of destruction all across North Texas. Good evening. I'm Doug Dunbar. We welcome you to CBS 11 News at 6. Chopper 11 over Jacksboro right now. Look at the expansive damage that's been done there. The aftermath of an EF3 tornado there yesterday. We've got team coverage for you in some of the hardest hit places today. Bowie and Jacksboro. Scott, Jason and Steve all on the road for you tonight. Let me give you a quick closer look at where exactly Jacksboro is. If you're not familiar, it's a City just north and west of Fort Worth in Jack County. That's where we're going to start tonight. Our chief meteorologist Scott Paget, uh, alongside someone Scott, I understand, who is in charge of taking care of a whole lot of children in all the chaos yesterday. Yeah, that's right there, Doug. We're right outside Jacksboro Elementary School, and as the tornado was moving in, it was very close to the time that these students were going to be released from school. Joining me now, Michael Qualls, the principal of Jacksboro Elementary School. You know, Michael, thanks so much for joining us, and uh, a very scary situation yesterday. Walk us through what you guys went through. Yeah, so uh, we were in contact with the chief of police, Chief Haynes, and our superintendent, and we were getting some quick feedback toward the end of dismissal uh, that we were in a tornado warning, and it escalated very quickly. And so in that time, we took our, all of our kids who were still uh, in the car line inside into the interior where we had already, already held our bus students. Um, and then after we got them in, we noticed that the parents were still in their cars. So we ran outside and tried to get as many parents as we could. Some of them didn't make it in and they stayed in their cars and rode it out there. Uh, but miraculously, after we uh, endured the first wave of the hit of the tornado, uh, we got the parents inside with their kids. Then there was smoke in that area. So we transitioned to another area where there was in a gas leak and then we went outside. So. It was just, it, it, it was really a whirlwind. Uh, of, yeah, a, a whirlwind uh, of emotions probably yeah. happening as well. So when it, it happened fast, yes. uh, this is work. This is your elementary school. Yeah. You know, you're in charge of this. What did it feel like when you walked back out and you saw what it is now? Yeah, so uh, having two boys of my own, um, when, I, when I think of my life as an administrator, I think about my kids, my own. But then I think about how those parents of the kids who need to get to their kids. And so my main focus after we came out was obviously making sure that everyone was safe, everyone was okay, uh, and then getting them to their parents as quickly as possible. Because I was even at that moment in the distant mindset wondering, where are mine? I got to get eyes on mine because mine are in here too. Uh, so um, being a parent myself, I think, allowed me to... Um, know where the parents were coming from because they obviously were in were in a panic as well. But um, we we're just so blessed uh, that God had His hand. Uh, we thought of two words today as we were reflecting on it: uh, wisdom and courage. God gave wisdom and courage to the adults. Our staff members were rock stars in there, keeping the kids calm, laying with them, praying with them. Uh, our kids were amazing. They they were not panicked at all, from what I heard from the teachers. And then our parents listening to the directions for myself and, and the chief of police and going where we need to go. It was, it was great. All the students safe, all the parents were safe after this. Where do you guys go from here? Yeah, so today we've been walking the facilities with a uh, mitigation cleanup company and we've been planning. Uh, we have a meeting tomorrow morning uh, where we're going to decide where we're going to uh, start and when we're going to start getting these kids back in the classroom because their education is the most important thing that we do as educators. Uh, but obviously safety is the number one thing. So we, we've got to find safe places and a safe place to have school and that's what we're going to try to do. And uh, that company uh, that we started with today got it going with a structural engineer and, and helping us get to that point. So. Well, we appreciate you uh, joining us. Sorry, it's been a long day for you, yeah. uh, and, and we know it's going to be a long recovery process, but we're happy to say, again, all the students were safe, the parents were safe, Amen. your boys included, Amen. inside riding out this tornado. So thank you so much. We appreciate it. Again, uh, Michael Qualls, is the principal here at Jacksboro Elementary School. So uh, a very violent tornado making its way through us here in Jacksboro, right here at Jacksboro Elementary School, but this isn't the only area that's seen severe damage. We want to go a little bit further to the southwest now of Jacksboro Elementary School, joining Jason Allen, uh, talking about more of the devastation here in Jack County. 
Yeah, Scott, and we're in that same area pretty close to the school, which, as you know, experienced the strongest of the winds from this EF3 tornado up to 150 miles per hour. And so it's where you see a lot of the damage. And we did want to point out that there is already some activity now to start to try to return power to these neighborhoods. So in the places where they could use that for cleanup or even some of these homes that may not be completely destroyed, um, they, they may want to get some power back in their houses if they are able to stay in some of them here. You know, this largely became a salvage day for people here picking through the debris, trying to save furniture and clothing and pictures and anything that didn't blow away. And then in some cases, the soundbite you heard at the top of the show, they're tearing down what was left. We were there today as Miguel Quintanilla just really gave up on his house so that he can start focusing on rebuilding right away. He wasn't in the house during the tornado, but he rode out the storm with his wife and kids in his truck. And we talked to a lot of people who were in their cars because this happened, as Scott, as you were just saying a few minutes ago, mid-afternoon as school was getting out. One grandmother told us that she had to decide whether to get inside the elementary school as the storm hit or try to drive away, and she picked the latter. We rode it out in the car. Where'd you pull in? Just, we sat in the road. There was a car behind us, and I just held the brake and prayed. <laughs> My brother's friend was in the car, and he's over there like, it's okay, it's okay. I'm yelling at him, it's not okay. I was like, I'm just yelling at him the entire time. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not okay. We're in a tornado, it's not okay. It ended up though, they were all okay. The car stayed where it was. They think that they were right on the edge of the storm. Doug, that was probably a place they definitely wanted to be because if they were right here in the middle, the strongest winds, it may have been a different outcome. Yeah, and, and I, I think we can all concur with that little girl who you talked to. It, we're in a tornado, it's not okay, but thank goodness everybody did get not out. okay. Yeah. yeah. Jason Allen, thank you so much. Our thanks to Scott Padgett as well. We'll talk to Scott again in just a little bit. Governor Greg Abbott, meanwhile, he saw everything there. He called it a miracle that nobody died in that Jacksboro tornado. After getting a briefing from city and county leaders in Jacksboro, the governor then signed a disaster declaration. This was that moment. This is for Jack Cook, Grayson, Montague, and Wise counties. He learned that dozens of homes have some type of damage from the storm. Nine people were hurt as the tornado blew specifically through this county. As horrific as the damage is uh, that we have seen, and the time it's going to take to repair that damage. Now, one takeaway from the storm is that the fact that nobody lost their life. The disaster declaration we saw the governor signed, uh, sign will help speed up efforts to clear debris left by the storm and that ongoing work. Now let's talk about residents in Bowie. They got together neighbor by neighbor helping clear debris and boarding up and tarping damaged homes today. Officials are still tallying the official property damage count there. Steve Pickett, he has been there all day for you. A significant cleanup for some of those who live there. Yeah, but I can tell you, Doug, uh, that uh, cup is half full here. So many people with the right perspective having to endure what you see behind me uh, and what an EF1 looks like and the impact on this community, but saying, look, folks are alive, they're safe, they feel much better despite what we see behind me here. I can tell you here, being here most of the day, 24 hours after this tornado barreled through this part of the buoy, we saw people simply trying to clear this mess. Homes, small ranches in the path, facing everything from roof damage, wall cave-ins, and in some cases, complete collapse. Two damaged homes had senior citizens inside. We visited both of those homes today. 70-year-old uh, Sue Toon, she was taken to a hospital for observation. She's fine. Her home, however, is not. And 81-year-old Albert McClanahan, he inside his home with his adult son. Grabbed my dad, that's him right here. And uh, took him down into the hallway and into the bathroom just as it started tearing glasses up and everything else. I think it was a direct hit, honestly, because it formed over by the Bowie High School and it made its way over here and it just hit this house. And I mean, by the time that it was hit, they were just kind of sitting there and all of a sudden it was just there. 
Again, we could show you so much of the damage that some of these communities faced here, not only in Bowie, but as you just saw just a few moments ago. But the focal point was on how some of these families are responding. Miss Toon, she is fine, we're told, by her granddaughters. Just a observation back home, uh, but trying to find a new home. The one that she had 24 hours ago is now gone. And the family behind me here, they too having support with other loved ones and community members here in Bowie. It is tough to look at, but folks, again, focus on the fact that virtually everyone here, injury-free. Reporting live, Steve Pickett, CBS 11 News. In the end, something to be thankful for. Steve, thank you so much.